Hello, boys and girls. Got uh, another video for you fine folks on the internet today. Uh, another installment in the Matthew Buckley Talks music series. Uh, once again, uh, we're looking at uh, an obscure uh, psychedelic rock gem from the 1960s. Uh, one uh, that is uh, from north of the border this time. Uh, north of the border from where I am in America. Um, we have uh, Magic People by the Poppers, uh, released in August of 1967 uh, by Verve Forecast Records, um, issued on vinyl and cassette, and concurrently issued by the uh, Verve Folkways subsidiary um, for Canadian markets. And it was also issued um, as a... Uh, three-quarter-inch IPS four-track stereo reel-to-reel -reel by Verve Forecast, so that's interesting to me. Um, <clears throat> and it would be over 40 years before it would see uh, another reissue. <clears throat> Finally getting um, a CD press in 2008 by Pacemaker, uh, Pacemaker Entertainment um, as a limited reissue with two bonus tracks. And uh, then over 10 years later, uh, it would be before uh, I got another issue in 2019, um, Old Days Records producing a uh, Japanese reissue of the album. So it's gotten very few pressings over the years. It's definitely not too commonly found in the shelves. And so a little bit of Spark Notes bio for uh, those that are probably unfamiliar with the Poppers. Um, relatively short-lived. Uh, the Poppers evolved from uh, rock and rhythm and blues group The Spats, which consisted of drummer Skip Prokop, rhythm guitarist and vocalist Bill Marion, also known as uh, Bill Meisner, and uh, bass player Denny Gerard, uh, with lead guitarist Chuck Beale. <clears throat> Formed in 1964, uh, the group established a reputation uh, through extensive rehearsals as one of the tightest bands in the Toronto area. And in 1965, they were signed to independent Canadian record label Red Leaf Records, uh, concurrently changing their name to the Poppers. And they had uh, local success with two singles, and in August of 1965, performed at the Canadian National Exhibition. Uh, in early 1966, uh, the band negotiated a new contract with Roman Records and continued to record and release 45s, but in July of 1966, guitarist and vocalist Bill Marion left the group. Uh, and they subsequently um, drafted in uh, Scottish immigrant Adam Mitchell on short notice for replacement. Um, but by mid-August, uh, he had quickly established uh, and firmly established himself as the group's new frontman and new songwriter. Uh, the group was then signed to a new contract with MGM Records in September and made a handful of prominent uh, live appearances in Canada. And in early 1967, uh, music mogul Albert Grossman uh, known for managing Bob Dylan in the 1960s, became the group's new manager, uh, renegotiating a new contract with MGM and Verve Forecast. And their next single would reach number 31 on the Canadian RPM chart, their biggest success up to that point. And the group traveled to New York City to play concert dates in support of Jefferson Airplane and, and also for recording sessions for their debut full-length album. And after recording Wrapped, uh, the group would travel to San Francisco to perform at the highly publicized 1967 Monterey International Pop Festival. But uh, unfortunately for them, they would not be featured in the major motion picture uh, produced by D.A. Pennebaker, nor any of the outtakes included in the expanded anniversary editions of the film. And following the Monterey Pop Festival, uh, MGM issued the track Magic People as a promotional single from the album of the same name, which, as I said earlier, was issued in uh, August 1967, so just a couple short months after the festival. Um, and the Poppers were sent on a 17-city United States tour 
in which they played gigs supporting acts such as Cream and the MC5. Uh, and the debut album Magic People peaked at number 178 in the U.S. album charts. Uh, but in spite of the modest success, uh, bass player Denny Girard left the group in late 1967. Uh, he was replaced by uh, bassist and vocalist Brad Campbell, uh, ironically, who had just left Bill Marion's new band, The Last Words. Uh, and they had uh, also brought in a touring keyboardist for live performances, who apparently only stayed with the band for all of a month. Uh, another single released from the Magic People album in January 1968 failed to make the charts, and drummer Skip Prokop began to dedicate more and more of his time to session work as opposed to the paupers. He had, uh, you know, been playing on uh, studio tracks by acts like Peter, Paul, and Mary and Richie Haven, so I imagine it was a steady and uh, nice paycheck for him as opposed to whatever was happening with his band. Uh, however, the group did hold together uh, and continued to play uh, plenty of gigs in support of internationally known acts, even uh, performing alongside the Jimi Hendrix Experience and the Soft Machine. And during a second United States tour, the group attempted to add another keyboardist in the form of British musician John Ord. Unfortunately, the band continued to suffer from internal conflicts, and at the beginning of September of 1968, uh, Prokop would actually leave the group to form a rock jazz classical fusion crossover ensemble uh, called Lighthouse and Brad Campbell would go on to uh, join Janis Joplin's newly formed Cosmic Blues Band. The following month in October of 1968 Adam Mitchell assembled guitarist Chuck Beale, keyboardist John Ord, and original bass guitarist Denny Girard to play a string of gigs specifically designed for the purpose of paying off remaining debts the band owed. This too, however, was a short-lived affair, uh, as Gerard would leave in early 1969, followed by Mitchell himself in April. And the remaining band members drafted Irish guitarist James Houston and uh, bass guitarist Mel O'Brien into uh, their uh, lineup to try to play what remaining dates they had. And uh, the James Houston fronted lineup made only a couple of performances, and by the end of August of 1969, the Poppers had officially parted ways. So, on to the album itself. Side one opens with the title track, Magic People, which, uh, <coughs> pardon me, which, as I said, was issued in July of 1967 as the group's eighth single. Right from the get-go, this is a, a lively start to the album. There's lots of very lively percussion and a driving bass line. It's, uh, it's, it's a classic sounding sunshine pop and psychedelic rock song. There, there's dreamy harmony vocals, fanciful lyrics, you know, like, some examples. It opens up with a lyric, uh, my head is full of sunshine, you know, and of course you, you get the chorus, we are the magic people. The people with the freedom sound, and lyrics like, listen to the sunshine, it's surprising what you see. It's about as hippy-dippy as you get, but it's, I, I, I eat it right up, I love it. And there's also a slew of unusual siren-like sound effects, you know, it's, it's like the, the theremin of the Beach Boys' good vibrations gone wild. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great open to the album. I like it a lot. Uh, and the next track, It's Your Mind, is twice the length of the uh, first track. It's another classic uh, psychedelic freak beat shuffle. You know, I think the track clocks in at just under five and a half minutes, so it's definitely a little longer. Um, but yeah, this is very reminiscent of the psychedelic San Francisco sound. Um, the lyrics <laughs> definitely sit comfortably in the... Uh, Typical psychedelic wheelhouse of, of altered perceptions and uh, existential epiphanies. Um, the song also features uh, an extended Raga-like guitar solo, you know, reminiscent of 
the great society, you know, the kind of things they would do with their versions of White Rabbit or Somebody to Love. Um, it's very cool, uh, very cool stuff. And the next track, Black Thank You Package, was uh, issued as the B-side of the group's eighth single in July of 1967, and is probably one of the group's most original sounding songs in my opinion they almost sound british both vocally and instrumentally if that makes sense but uh there's something about it that i can't put my finger on that makes it feel a bit different maybe it's the backing vocals that feel distinctly reminiscent of the west coast sound as i referred to earlier uh, but in any case it's a lovely song the drums are impressive with the kind of almost marching thing they do. Um, and I do enjoy the vocals, the uh, sort of pseudo-British vocals. Uh, the intro and outro are also punctuated by a, a very interesting kind of, I don't know how to describe it besides scattershot guitar riff. It's you know almost jazzy in so a certain way. Um, it's a good stuff. I like the song a lot. And the following track, Let Me Be, was issued as the B-side of the group's sixth single in February of 1967. Uh, in my opinion, it almost sounds like it could be a Simon and Garfunkel song, but uh, and it, that being said, it almost sounds like uh, more like latter-era Simon and Garfunkel, you know, from the late 60s or early 70s. You know, it was a sound that they themselves had yet to achieve, so you could... You could say that it's a, it's a progressive song in its own right. Uh, the lyrics are also unique in this consideration as well. Uh, kind of opposed to the typical come together and love each other ethos that is more frequently espoused in popular music of the 1960s. The song doesn't exactly uh, celebrate per se, but acknowledges and accepts one's struggles and one's singularity asking the singer asking if they could just be let be for a little while it's a real highlight of the album for me but definitely a five star song um and the next track uh swings the mood uh, in another direction it was uh, issued as the group's ninth single in january of 1968 and uh though it it, it features a familiar sounding rhythm section uh, in my opinion very reminiscent of Captain Soul from the Birds album Fifth Dimension, you know, with this kind of at least that's how I feel. I hope you all enjoyed my mouth percussion there. Um, but the song is adventurous and original all on its own. Uh, there's wild guitar effects and very uh, charismatically delivered vocals that make it stand out. And the lyrics have got just as much uh, bite as the guitar. It's a tale about a guy with his heart set on uh, impressing and earning the love of a lady who couldn't be bothered to give him the time of day. He keeps telling him, you think I care? It's good stuff. Um, another highlight of the album, I'd say. And there's, <laughs> the chorus also has a, a, a lyric I like uh, where our, you know, the lady in question uh, says to our character when she sees him in such a... Uh, distraught um worn out disarray from his attempts to win her over you know seeing him with his hair torn up you know asking uh you know hey baby you all there it's it's good stuff i like it it's a good song the uh it's also the closer of side one side two opens with uh one rainy day which was issued as the group's seventh single in april of 1967 and as far as I'm concerned, this is a song with certified hit potential. Uh, the band is bouncy and groovy. The vocals are carefree, yet full of swagger and energy. All the ingredients are there. It's a relatively short but totally dynamite song. It's one of my highlights. As, as I've uh, said before in other videos, it's a perfect slice of sunshine pop. I especially enjoy the uh, subtle horns that sit below the vocals. They really push the song along and add to the upbeat energy. Uh, the next track, Tudor Impressions, 
uh, was issued as the B-side of the group's seventh single in April of 1967, coupled with the previous track. And it swings uh, the mood in another direction once more. It's a mid-tempo song. There's much more contemplative and somewhat melancholy moods to this song. There are some lovely group uh, harmony vocals, you know, the ba 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 type vocals near the song's fade. Um, another song with uh, vaguely almost pseudo-British overtones, if I can uh, say so myself. It's, it's a great song. Very, very thoughtful. Um, the next track, uh, Simple Deed, was issued as the A-side of the group's sixth single in February 1967. Uh, this song, and in particular the verses, feels very much like a Mamas and the Papas track. They're, they're a lovely group vocals throughout. Definitely a, a standout track for me on the album. It begs you to dance. It's one of my favorites. It's, it's, it's a, a real fun song. And... And that's the bottom line. It's it, it's fun. You hear this, and you know it gets your toes tapping. Uh, it, again, it exemplifies that kind of folk rock, sunshine pop, California sound. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> and the uh, next track, "My Love Hides Your View," is a uh, one of the slower songs on the album. It's a very deliberately paced psychedelic rumination. The song carries you places, if you let it, through very spacey interludes and very spacey instrumentation. Uh, I know, I feel like I've already said this too many times in the video, but it's, it's cool stuff. Um, the next track, You and Me, is uh, once more takes that mood and shifts it in another direction. It's another up-tempo rocker uh, with very jangly guitars and... Again, confident and charismatic vocals. It almost uh, kind of reminds me of a bird's track, uh, perhaps with uh, slightly less dazzling harmonies than the birds could pull off. Um, but it's it's a great track and a fine closer to side two and of the album. So, final thoughts. This is an album of many moods and uh, unique messages uh, spread across its two sides, voiced through ten very strong and quite varied tracks. Uh, seven of the album's ten cuts were issued as 45 RPM singles over an 11-month period between February of 1967 and January 1968. And every song was uh, written by rhythm guitarist and vocalist Adam Mitchell and drummer and bass guitarist Skip Prokop. Uh, those two, uh, along with the uh, rest of the band, uh, managed to create an album that captures several different uh, facets of the popular psychedelic sounds of the day. Songs like Magic People and One Rainy Day open each side of the album with classic-sounding, upbeat, sunshine pop and psychedelic rock crossover. And tracks like It's Your Mind and my Love Hides Your View delve a bit deeper into psychedelia, featuring more existential lyrics and more extended, adventurous, even spacey instrumentation. Tracks like Black Thank You Package and Let Me Be and Tudor Impressions combine different localized sounds and styles, somehow sounding regal and British, at the same time as sounding rural and American, at the same time as sounding naturally Canadian, <laughs> being that they are, you know, kind of blurring the borders, if you will, um, blurring the borders musically, specifically. And all three of the songs that I just mentioned are also wholly unique in their lyrical content, uh, sta definitely standing apart from the typical 1960s light and fluffy come together and, you know, free love and don't worry, um, you know, ideas that are espoused in, in, you know, it's, there's a little bit of that here, but it's, it's, uh, more the exception than the rule. Um, 
And a track like Think I Care, you know, that takes a step into more aggressive, psychedelic, freak beat styles. Um, you know, it sounds like it could be, you know, whether it be like early Grateful Dead or gosh, the Rolling Stones. I could see like mid-60s Rolling Stones doing a song like Think I Care. That would be a hell of a cover. Um, and then you get tracks like uh, A Simple Deed and You and Me which straddle the line, uh, as I've said, between the folk rock and sunshine pop uh, California sound, you know, in the vein of groups like the Mamas and the Papas or even the Birds, like I mentioned before. There's, there's so many niche variations of the general psychedelic sound so accurately represented and genuinely executed so consistently throughout this album. It's, it's impressive, and it's... A shame that these guys only kept it together for one more full-length album after this. But, that's the way it goes. But And, and that being said, they at least, uh, for the most part, uh, were all involved in further musical projects down the road. Um, as I mentioned, Skip Prokop started his uh, collective... Uh, sort of uh, with an expanded and uh, shifting lineup, Lighthouse... And um, Adam Mitchell, gosh, I'm spacing on the group, but I know he was involved in, in uh, production or uh, engineering or mixing or arrangement. Somehow involved in uh, another group that starts with an M, and I am very ashamed of myself that I did not put this down in the notes because I'm spacing. Um, I'll have to put it down in the description below because this is really going to bug me, or if it comes to me before the end of the video, I'll have to mention it. Mention it. It's two words, something, something spring, something M spring. Anyways, um, a little closer look at the cover art for you guys. It's got a very cool, uh, psychedelic, kaleidoscopic image set of images of the band. Very swell graphic design. A very cool logo in the center. Some nice bubble letters. Uh, very you know cool font for the band up there. Uh, the back cover, uh, rather than uh, track listing, just has a very fun portrait of the band uh, sitting in a field or forest, some sort, kind of just hanging out, laughing, looking cool. On the inside of the gatefold, you get uh, more pictures of the band, the logo in black and white, a little uh, background on each band member, nothing too crazy. You get the track list. Um, looks like, yeah, with the track times, as I suspected, uh, It's Your Mind is the longest track on the album at almost five and a half minutes. The next track would be two, next longest track would be Tudor Impressions at a little over four minutes. <coughs> mm, pardon me, goodness. A little over four minutes on side two. Uh, some composer credits, production credits, arrangement credits. Uh, engineering credits cover design by David Krieger so good job David I liked your design um, but yeah this has uh, been a very very swell album um, I you know must confess I stumbled upon it and picked it up just for the cover and uh, ha have been very pleased with my discovery I was not uh, familiar with uh, any of the band members or any of their work, so this is uh, going to send me down a little bit of a rabbit hole. Um, all things considered, uh, this album, even though it's not a uh, life changer, I do not hesitate at all. I'm going to rate this 8 out of 10. It's very strong. There are no songs that I would say, for me, fall flat. And the, you know, the vocals are, are confident. The instrumentation is more than competent across the different styles expressed throughout, you know, from freak beat to folk rock and sunshine pop. It, uh, it's all very, very convincingly done. So this album for sure gets the thumbs up from me and 8 out of 10 on the rating scale. So uh, now that uh, I've been rambling for about 25 minutes or so, uh, let me know in the comments below. Are any of you familiar with the Poppers? Have you heard this Magic People album or any of their, well, 
their other, I think they have two albums aside from this, uh, one from the year before that uh, is either a live album or a compilation, I'm not sure, and then one more after before they went their separate ways. But uh, have you heard any of their stuff, or even just any of their singles? I'd love to hear about it below uh, in the comments section. Let's get a discussion flowing. Um, once again, thanks for anybody who's uh, watched all the way few through. <laughs> I appreciate any and all viewership, and uh, keep tuning in because I'll keep them coming at you. Uh, this has been Matthew Buckley Talks Music with Magic People by the Poppers. Music is the best.